Okay, I'm with Senate candidate Dr. Rand Paul. You spoke about the deterrent effects of firearms. Would you elaborate on that, please? Well, I think it's one of the unheralded things in our country. People talk about, well, is our crime rate higher or lower than other countries? But one thing they don't talk about enough is that we have the lowest home invasion rate of any of the civilized countries. And I think a lot of that is because half of this country owns a gun or more. And criminals don't know who has a gun and who doesn't have a gun. And that deters them from breaking into your house. What I think is also great about it is those of us who believe in the Second Amendment, we're also protecting those who don't believe in the Second Amendment because nobody knows who has a gun and who doesn't have a gun. And so I think guns do provide great deterrence to crime, and I think it's a good idea for most Americans to have one. Well, we know the importance of the Senate in terms of confirming court nominees, particularly on the Supreme Court, and we recently had two decisions, the Heller decision and the McDonnell decision. Uh, you spoke a bit on that. Would you care to tell us a bit more? I think it was always accepted by most Americans that the Second Amendment did apply to individuals, but we never really had a good court case to say so. And then over the last 50 or 60 years, the liberal movement has gotten going in our country where they say, well, you don't have a right to own a gun, and they've enforced gun bans in Chicago in D.C. and New York, and so these court cases were very important, and for the first time the Supreme Court said yes, you do have an individual right to, to have a gun, and then states and cities cannot take away that individual right to own a gun. So I think there were big cases. The other thing that was important about this, though, was President Obama, who I think is the most anti-gun president we've had in probably a hundred years, if not ever, appointed Sotomayor, and she said, oh, she was going to defend the Second Amendment, and she got on the court, and she was one of the more liberals that voted against, or was a dissenting viewpoint in the Heller case. She didn't defend the individual right to bear arms, and then uh, also the McDonald case. So, it is important who we nominate. Right now, President Obama has nominated uh, Kagan, and I think she'll be another vote, just like Sotomayor, who would not be in favor of individual right to bear arms, and it's close. It's 5-4. We get one more appointment from, Senator, from President Obama, and this could be reversed. So we need people in the Senate who are going to vote for the Constitution and for the Bill of Rights. Absolutely. And, uh, you know, we've gotten a lot of national exposure talking about the Second Amendment. If people go to my website, randpaul2010.com, they can see how we talk about the gun issues. I've probably been to 20 gun shows. Um, we've been endorsed by the Gun Owners of America, so I am active in the gun community. And when we go into these gun shows, they know it. I don't think my opponent's going to get very many votes in Kentucky because they're seen as being the party that really doesn't defend the Second Amendment well. And a lot of candidates pay lip service at times. They say, I believe in the Second Amendment, but... And then they turn around and they make anti-gun rulings and anti-gun votes and things of that nature. And they try to pass it off. And I guess what a lot of people are looking for are people who will not just talk about the Second Amendment, but who will actually show leadership in terms of championing the Second Amendment. And we certainly see that coming from the Rand Paul campaign. And I appreciate you speaking with us today. Best of luck in your campaign. Thank you.